as we enter back into worship. And in the book of Ephesians, it says that God is able to do far more than we could ever ask or think or imagine according to the power at work in us. And so just like many moms that are here today or who are watching, who are dependable, right? I know my mom is a dependable person, but the one who is the most dependable is God. The one who is the most faithful is God. The one who always comes through is God. And so we know we can expect that he will come through. He, he will come through for us. He knows what is best for us. So right now we can lift our hands and just say, God, I trust you. You are mighty. You are dependable. You are great. You are El Shaddai, God Almighty.
says that we'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So we thank you, God, that we can see your goodness right here, right now. Lord, you are the mighty one, the one that we can lean on. God, when we don't understand what's happening in front of us, we can lean on you. depend on you. Thank you, Lord. So right now, for anyone who's just dealing with doubt and fear and unbelief, God, we say, we believe, help our unbelief. We believe, help our unbelief. Come and be the strong and mighty one for us. Mighty One, we worship You. 
share with you tonight this message we call the welcome home message here and I'll explain why we call it that in just a minute but I want to start with with the fact that all of us in this room share something tonight we all share the same greatest need and that's the need to know God and to be known by him but at the same time our greatest need also is our greatest dilemma it's funny how it works that way because we've all been um, born into this world separate from God. And you might be saying to yourself, how can that be? I'm a good person. I do good things. I love my neighbor. I make meals for the hungry. I, I do good deeds. And I want to believe you. I want to believe that about you. And I want to believe that about myself too. But the fact of the matter is, all of us can look back on the story of our lives and find things that we regret. Things we wish we hadn't said. Things we wish we hadn't done. Things we wish we could take back. And one day, when we breathe our last breath, we're gonna to have to stand before God and give an account for our lives. The Bible calls that our day of judgment. And what breaks my heart is that some of us are gonna to get to that day and look at God and, and still have regrets. But there's good news on the other side of that. In steps Jesus, and he says, I can fix all of that for you. You see, there's no amount of striving or working hard that you can do to earn the love of God and to become, to come back into a right relationship with him. In fact, um, you might try your hardest tonight and say, well, you know, I think I could go, I could go and, and do a little bit better. But the, the thing is, you're still going to make mistakes and you're still going to have regrets. And Jesus says, fixing it from the outside is not how this works. Let me come into your heart and change you from the inside. In fact, 2 Corinthians 5.17, it's one of our favorite verses here. It says that anyone who believes in him, being Jesus, the old has gone and the new has come. And what Jesus does for us is he enters our heart and he changes us um, a permanent change from the inside out. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not still going to make mistakes, like I said. But what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago was not only forgive you for the mistakes of your past, but the mistakes you're, you're still going to make in this life. His blood covers it all, the past and the future. Paul says in Romans 5 that you have been justified by faith, not by your works. And because of that, you have peace with God. And this peace also brings a hope. And, and the beginning of that chapter goes on to say that we should celebrate and exult in the hope of the glory of God. But not only that, we should also exult and celebrate in the tribulations, that means trials, that's a fancy word, for the things that are about to come. Because in that, we're going to develop perseverance. And perseverance is gonna show your proven character. And your proven character is gonna to point to hope. And hope does not disappoint. And that's what the gospel is all about. It's this hope that will never fade in your life because that day when you breathe your last and you face God in heaven, you have a hope that you're facing eternal life and not condemnation of eternal death. And so we call this the welcome home message because if you've, if you've, never, breathed, if you've never made a vow of devotion to God, when you do, you, we call it breathing your first spiritual breath and you enter into the family of God and all of heaven says, welcome home, welcome home. And we say that here too at City Life Church. Welcome home, welcome into the family of God. And so if you're online, if you're in the room and you're thinking, I've never said that before, I've never made that kind of promise to God, or even if you had, don't check out on this because this could be a message that you're meant to share with somebody else. That was really heavy on my heart as I was preparing for this tonight that some of us go, well, I've already been living with Jesus, so I don't need to hear this, but what if you do so that you can, who, who knows who you're gonna meet tomorrow or this week at work, who needs to hear this message and needs to be given this hope? And so if you're um, in the room or if you're online, I'm just going to ask that you close your eyes um, and just bow your heads, not as any kind of like spiritual, there's nothing spiritual about doing those things. It just creates a moment of privacy and eliminates any distractions around us. And if you want to make your first vow of devotion to the Lord, you can borrow my words and the rest of you can just plant these seeds in your heart, plant these words in your heart for somebody that in your life, maybe even God will bring that to you as I pray, that, that person's name, face, um, that you need to share this with. So let's pray together. Dear Jesus, 
I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you rose again from the dead. And I believe that your death conquered sin and death. And so, Lord, I make a vow of devotion to you, and I invite you into my heart to make an eternal, lasting change. Change me from the inside out, God. I receive the forgiveness you offer me for, the, for my sins that I have done and that I have yet to commit, Lord. And I believe, Lord, that I have now etern- the gift of eternal life and that I have a hope that I can move on forward from this day on knowing that, that the, the disappointments that I've already faced, is, that's not what I have to sit in, Lord, that you've given me hope. And I just thank you so much for that that gift, God, that I didn't do anything to earn, I didn't deserve it, but you give it to me because you love us so much. And we pray all that in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. If you've made your first vow of devotion to the Lord tonight and you would like somebody to talk to or pray with, there's gonna be people up here at the end of service. Please don't, and also online. If you're online, there's, there's leaders online who are, who are ready to talk to you and pray with you. Don't leave tonight without making a connection with someone. Let's head back into a moment of worship. Father, we just thank you for this, these moments that we have in your presence tonight, Heavenly Father. 
for the opportunity that we have to pause in the chaos of life and in the busyness of life and to quiet our hearts in your presence tonight. And Father, it's truly our prayer that each person here would receive from you tonight. You intimately know the journey of each person. You know the story of their life. You even wait in their tomorrow. And so God, I pray that we would, we would meet with a heavenly Father who is in the details of our life and is exactly what we need where we stand right now tonight, Jesus. We thank you, Father, that you always have something new to say. You always have hope and life and healing and purpose to speak into our hearts. And Father, for each person here, I just pray you'd give us ears to hear from you tonight, that we would receive everything that you have, God. You are such a good, good Father. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen.